everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on episode eight of Buddy Daddies, and I'm super excited because it's the rule of eight! So, we've had a lot of eight episodes happen this week, so if you've been watching a lot of my shows on this channel, then this is probably old hat, but if not, uh, I have a special rule about series that are 11 to 13 episodes, whether it's the series or the season, and that is the rule of eight. And that rule is that in an 11 to 13 episode series, the eighth episode is always really good. It is either a, a turning point towards the final act, or it reveals a lot of character information, or it's leading up to something, or it's hilarious. It's always a good episode, and eight's my lucky number, so I look forward to it. And we are on episode eight of Buddy Daddies, and I am so freaking excited because last episode was amazing. Last episode, I think episodes six, seven, and three are my favorites so far. I think episode six is my third favorite. Episode three and episode seven are pretty tied for my favorites because they're so good, right? And I've got a couple uh, comments real quick here, but I realized something um, after I rewatched the episode when I was editing, and that is that throughout the episode, there are lots of hydrangeas, right? There are lots of hydrangeas, and hydrangeas mean they're a source of apology, they represent gratitude, emotion. But here's the thing, y'all. I made a tweet on Twitter about it. It's like my most tweeted thing ever. <laughs> but if you look at the colors of the hydrangeas, they're the color of, you know, that represent bisexuality. And I was like, oh my God, they're like the bisexual flag, which again, the entire episode is about Kazuki moving forward. It's okay to be yourself. It's okay to live your life. It's okay to let something new into your life. I'm just saying, subtext, y'all. Subtext. And, and somebody was saying in the comments, they're like, well, there's the emotional symbolism of the hydrangea itself. And I'm like, yes, there is the hydrangea as a flower is very representative of the emotions and gratitude and things he feels around Yuzuko, around Karin, around Ray, etc. But I will make note, the choice to make them the color of the bisexual flag is very much an intentional choice because I did a little research about hydrangeas and apparently the color of the hydrangea varies on the pH level in the soil, meaning that I, my mother used to have a hydrangea plant and it was white. So that color of the hydrangea was white. It was because of the pH levels in the soil that it was planted in. So if you're gonna have hydrangeas of all these varied colors, that would mean your soil has levels of pH ranges and that's pretty hard to do. So they technically should all be the same color, but we'll just happen to make them the color of the bisexual flag, it's fine. <laughs> so I was like, yes. So our bisexual King Kazuki, in my book, it's confirmed, but. I, there's been several people also talking in the comments about that I'm just now catching up to about the idea that that even if Kazuki and Rei are not a romantic couple, it's still important in this show because they could be what we call queer platonic or queer tonic. And, and that idea, queer platonic, where they're characters that, that don't necessarily have a sexual attraction to one another, but the, it's more than a platonic relationship. It's it's just more than that alone, right? There is a caring aspect of it. And I understand that. I, you know, I, you, it, I love romance and I love shipping characters an awful lot, but I'm kind of on the spectrum of asexuality myself. So I, I get that. I just like shipping characters a lot and it's a lot of fun. But if you told me that they were just two characters that really liked each other, and they cared for one another, but there wasn't any sexual attraction, I'd be like, that's fine. I, I love shipping so much and I'm a big romance buff that I'm like, I really want that romantic aspect, right? So I, I'm still gonna ship them, but if you don't, that's totally fine. But one thing that I do get frustrated with is when people try to say that there's no way they have feelings for one another, I'm like, Okay, <laughs> sure. In that regard, you might as well say that nearly every shown impossible couple is not a couple because they have no romantic attraction throughout the entire series until like the very last chapter. So whatever, we're not going to go there. But I do have a couple comments before we start. Uh, Z Ara talked about how the name of the cafe that Q Chan works at is called Mistletoe. And I was like, well, that's fun because Q, uh, Ziahara was like, well, you know, mistletoe is like kind of a poisonous plant. And that relates perfectly to Q Chan fronting this like assassin business. And I'm like, it does. And it's also great because you kiss under the mistletoe. So if we had a Christmas OVA where it was like a year later, a Christmas OVA with Ray and Kazuki, and I don't know, they were under the mistletoe. I don't know. And they just like hugged or something because this show may be too afraid to go that way. I would love that. <laughs> but we'll see if we even get anything like that. 
And then Kelly Unterborn talked about how Mary's presence helping to heal Ray and Kazuki. And I'm like, yes, Mary's presence has been helping to heal both Ray and letting him like move forward from his terrible childhood. And then Kazuki, him moving forward from losing his wife or his would be wife. Right. So I'm just really giddy and excited and I'm kind of all over the place, but it's episode eight of Buddy Daddies and I'm freaking excited. So We'll see what happens, right? But I'm not going to waste any more time. I've been waiting for this episode all day. And it's like Buddy Daddy Fridays is the way to go. I officially am like in love with Buddy Daddy Fridays. I'm going to miss it when it's gone so much. So let's find out what happens with our boys and just uh, and just see, right? So I'm going to make sure that my subtitles are on, that my volume's on, and we are going to start uh, Buddy Daddy's episode. <laughs> episode... Eight, and we're gonna do that here in three, two, one, and let's do this. <sighs> I'm honestly very scared for the rest of the season now because because damn it, his dad is gonna make things really hard. All I can hope is we we still have episodes nine, ten. 11, 12, th we have five episodes left. We have five, y'all. We have five. And I know what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen is that the next episode, they're going to throw us completely. They're going to make us forget all about the dad. They're going to make us forget all about him. They're going to be like, you know, episode nine, what dad? What, what research Q Chan's doing? What Rio, who's a freaking psychopath? What, whatever, you know, we're just going to have a great old time. Episode nine, everything's great. And then episode 10, 11, 12, and 13, the last four episodes, the final act are going to be all about them against the dad. I'm like, I'm like, does Ray, does Ray not have any other siblings? Which this guy does not seem like the kind of guy that he just has a kid to have the family name. Like, he, you should have had a backup kid, boss. <laughs> you should have had a second kid that could have taken over the family business. You should have planned ahead. The the Kil Kilowas family in Hunter x Hunter, there was a whole family of them. They were prepared <laughs> for a kid that wanted to go solo and have his own life. They were ready in Hunter x Hunter for that sort of thing. Not so much here. I'm like, just leave Ray alone. I'm like, one, what? Mm. We're going to talk about this, but I'm really afraid now that, that Miri is going to be in danger. Like, Kazuki, I'm not so worried about because Kazuki... He's been an assassin. He may be sloppy, but he knows what he's doing. But Mary, I'm afraid of. I don't want them to hurt Mary. Also, she's just like, let me be friends with Grandpa. <laughs> Gray's like, mm -mm -mm. nope, don't want that. So I, oh God, this episode, it makes me, I, you know, we start out the series being like, what a fun little romp. What a fun little romp. Isn't this great? Kind of reminds you of Spy Family, right? But it's not, there's more tension. Again, I, I desperately this summer, and my dog's like, play with me. This summer, I'm definitely thinking I want to do a video about Spy Family versus Buddy Daddies because I have not felt the tension and dread in Spy Family that I felt in this show. I'll tell you that right now. No, I was never worried in that series like I am in this one. This series got freaking dark real quick. And the moment they showed that they killed the man's wife, I was like, oh, hmm. So that begs a lot of questions. Um, the thing about it is I could see people asking like, okay, what about Kazuki's wife? Was her death orchestrated by the Sua family then? I don't think so. I, I honestly think that, that y Yuzuku's, Yuzuko's death was a legit accident. I think that she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I don't think Ryo saw her there. He just, he, well, he, he shot the tire and then it hit the truck. So I, don't, I think it was a pure accident. I don't think it was intentional. If we find out it was intentional, it's gonna be like, oh, hell no. But I don't think it really was. I think that it was a solely an accident and it just happened. Now, if for some reason Kazuki meets up with Ray's dad at some point and Ray's dad's like, well, your wife deserved to die because she didn't need to be with you and Kazuki goes all AWOL on him, then I won't be surprised. But I don't think that her death was caused by the Sua family. I think it was just a bad accident, wrong place, wrong time. But I could see the dad, the Sua head of the family, using that to kind of like chide against the peasant Kazuki. I was like, man, I, you know what? We talk about this. I, I love Kazuki and Ray's relationship. I love it. It is, it's such a beautiful, like synthetic, synthetic, synthesized, um, synesthesia 
relationship where everything is just so beautifully threaded together, but it does not fit old daddy boss's idea of a family and a relationship, right? So we have, we have these concepts of family, and I didn't get my markers out. I was so like, oh my God, this episode, we need to talk about it. But we've got this concept of family, right? This concept of family. And I want to make note this concept of duty, right? We have these two concepts here, right? That we're going to talk about this episode, uh, specifically between the boss, uh, Rio, Q-Chan, Kazuki, and Ray, right? And then Mary. Mary was so adorable in this episode. She was so cute. And I think it's really cool that this series has, without telling us the audience, it has shown a passage of time, right? Because we started out around Christmas, which is in December, and it was around Christmas and New Year's. And then we cut to episode six, which was in May, because they went to the zoo. And then episode seven happened a little later um, during the rain shower. So I don't know how Japanese weather is when you have the rainstorms and stuff like the monsoon season, if that's June or July. And now we have August, which is Ray's birthday. And so it's like we have had eight months have passed since they got Miri in their lives and they figured things out. I love that passage of time, right? And it's just made their relationship. It makes the dynamic between Kazuki and Ray and how it's how it's developed more believable because that time that passage of time has happened, right? And the way that they respond to Miri and are with her. But y'all! Starting out this episode, I'm sure people on Twitter and social media have been like, you see Ray with the suit, right? You see his suit with the red tie. Instantly when you see that red tie, you're like, okay, that's Ray's suit. And him getting ready in the darkness. And him putting that shirt on. I'm sure every Twitter and social media was like that back shot of him silhouetted in the shirt. But the idea that Ray gets ready, right? That when he sees the family, that you have Ray and that he dresses in the suit to meet his father because there is that that expectation right there's that expectation of how he should present himself around his dad and it does suggest that ray respects his father he respects him we now know that ray was given that the apartment that the apartment was supplied by his dad, but it was cleaned by Kazuki. I love that detail. I love the idea that Kazuki is the one that picked it up. We'll get to it when we get to it, but his dad's funded him. He basically, um, if you know about, there's people that are Amish or Mennonite, it's like a, it's a religion and it, there's people here in the U.S. I, there's a lot of Amish people in our community, but they have this thing called Rumspringer, which is where they go, like, they get to take, like, a leave of absence from the family and from their religion and go off and do their own thing, and they decide whether they like that lifestyle or not, and then they can come back if they choose not to stay in that lifestyle outside of the family. But here's the thing. So we have a lot of Amish people that do that. They do Rumspringer. They go off when they're 18, do their own thing, and then they choose to either come back to the family or don't. If they don't, though, they are cut completely from the family. All their ties are cut. So, so I I would really like for Ray just to be able to be to cut his ties from his dad and be like, no, I don't want to work for you anymore, or I don't want to be part of your family anymore, and to do that. But I don't know how his dad would let him do that if they're gonna let him to cut ties because they're a family of assassins. He says it's the blood flows through his veins. Are they gonna let him do that or not? I we're gonna talk about it, but. I feel like by the end of the episode, Ray's like, can we change? And Kazuki just laughs like, I've been wondering the same thing, right? And at first, I think that there's a good um, difference here with Ray and Kazuki. So put Ray over here and Kazuki over here. And Ray is asking, can, can we change? And Kazuki is wondering, should we change? Right? There's this question of can we and should we? Is it possible and should we do it? And the answer is if it makes them better people, yes and yes, right? But him just getting ready in the darkness. I love that. that he just And he just looks so serious as he gets ready. And then he's in the suit and everything has the hair pulled up. 
and he's going to leave and that's when he spots Miri. And the moment he sees Miri, his face instantly softens just a little teeny bit. And she's like going up to get ready. So the, the idea was for his birthday, they were going to have him leave the house. They're going to have him leave the house or, or get rid of him somehow so they could put, put the stuff together for him. And that's the surprise. That's really cute. I like that. But yeah, by like Mary, she's like, oh, good morning, Ray Papa. And I love that he says, good morning. And she asks if he's going out. And then he tells, and I love that she explains why she's up there. And he says, I'm heading home for a while. And she says, but your home is here. And he says, true. So it's that idea of where your home is. Like the home is where the, the home is where the heart is. It's like that is Ray's home. His home is with Mary and Kazuki. And he realizes that this is something he wants to fight for. And it's just, it's so damn precious. And he's like, but I got to go home and see my father. I love that he says that you're not incorrect. And Kazuki like walks out with his shirt all like sideways. And he's like, keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. And then saying, oh, did we have a job today? And he says, no. I like that he doesn't tell Kazuki where he's going, but he told Mary, right? And then Kazuki's like, don't blab, Mary, that we're going to... She's so cute. I was like, people that say she's annoying, I'm like, get out of here. You you don't deserve to be watching this show if you think she's annoying, especially at this point. Mm -mm. And also, that's kind of another thing, too. I don't know if we've talked about this in the series, but... A lot of people say Miri's annoying, and she's changed as the show's going on. She's gotten better as the show goes on. And I honestly think that the reason she was kind of wild and feral and just yelling all the time was because when she was with her mom, her mom didn't make her stop. Her mom didn't discipline her. Her mom didn't care. Misaki was just like, eh, whatever, and just let her run wild. So that's why she got away with all that. But now that she has a structure with Rei and Kazuki, she doesn't do that as often. Like, she still does. She's four. But she doesn't do it as often, and it's more controlled because she's better behaved because she has them as an example. So I feel like that's, like, another subtle thing the show has done is let her be a better character from being around Rei and Kazuki. I like that. I like that a lot. And I like Kazuki's like, don't stay out too late. They're like a married couple. They're literally like a married couple looking out for one another, right? He's like, come back home. I, they are. They're like a married couple, and it's so cute. And they're like, have a good day. Okay, and on the on the calendar, it is circled August 10th, right? And they, did, they, did he say where he was going? And he said, home. Mm. So he's a Leo. So is, is Kazuki a Leo? Interesting. I would not, or Ray, I mean. I would not have pegged Ray as a Leo. That's rather interesting hmm i don't know if there's any reason that he's like so his dad called him home so kazuki knows about the family knows about the sua family knows about all that and he's like well then we'll just make that work to our advantage and we've got this mission and yep it's august 10th hmm interesting so we'll cut through this of him going to the family. Again, it reminded me very much of Hunter Hunter. I've not seen all of Hunter Hunter. I my brother and I binged it like up to a certain point before I started this channel and then I dropped it because I didn't have time to watch it anymore and he got a new job so we couldn't watch it together anymore. I'd like to go back and rewatch it and give it more time and actually analyze it because honestly, we were watching like 6 episodes a night during the pandemic and we didn't really, it was just, I, I was half paying attention at the time, working on something else. He was doing something else. We were just in the same room watching because it was something fun. But it would be nice to go back through it and give it a better look at some point. But I do remember seeing like the big mansion of Killua's family and they're a bunch of assassins. So it's a fun time. But yeah, so him going to the dad and the, the mansion is so beautiful, but it's dark and empty so it's fu it's funny that you have ray that you have the bright and colorful apartment right versus the dark and empty mansion and that's kind of the sad thing about it is the dad puts on this whole thing of being like this is your legacy and you're noble and all this stuff but it's just hollow there's no substance to it. And he's like, well, it's your job to carry on the family name. I'm like, let's be real for a hot second. Ray is not getting with any lady. <laughs> That's just 
just not happening. I mean, if you told me Kazuki had to get with a lady to f continue the family line, sure. He's been, like, known as kind of a womanizer at the beginning of the series, and he's all about the ladies. So I would totally believe that. But if you told me Ray had to, like, get with a lady and have a kid, no. <laughs> I'm like, that's, I'm like, do you know your own son? You don't, because you've just raised him to be assassin. So you don't realize that's not Ray at all, right? But it's this idea. And also, I like that Kazuki is the peasant. I like that he's called a peasant. The common folk. He's a commoner. And he's sloppy, according to the dad. And Ray is of noble assassin blood as a Sua. Yeah, I that just reads like such a romantic trope where the parent doesn't agree about the partner and the parent's like, that partner's not good enough for you. They're a commoner. You're like, I feel like we just waltzed into a Victorian novel and Ray's father's like, you can't marry Kazuki. He's a commoner, a peasant. And Ray's like, but I love him, daddy. And so it's just <laughs> as if Ray would ever have a Southern accent. But yeah, it's been three years since he's been. So basically... It has been three years since he left home. And it's been established that that was more of like a rebellious streak, right? But he didn't immediately get the apartment, or maybe if he did, he didn't immediate, immediately meet Kazuki, right? We don't know how long the time frame is between Ray uh, on his own and then meeting Kazuki. We don't know the exact time frame. Like, was he on his own for like six months? Was he on his own for like a year? And then he met Kazuki. But Kazuki and him have at least been together as partners for at least a year. At least a year or two. I would say my theory is that, that Ray was on his own for like six months. And that's how all that junk accumulated in his apartment. And then he met Kazuki. And then Kazuki was like, okay. And then they, they formed together. And it seemed to be after Kazuki's like fiance died that they got together right and so then we cut to them at the grocery store we cut to uh kazuki and miri at the grocery store we go from this like dark dark empty mansion that ray is quietly walking through to this bright grocery store where we have hoi hoi whipped cream fresh cream fluffy cream whipped cream spray and he's like there's a house he lived in with his dad before and he gets the fresh cream He's like, Papa Ray's Papa. He's like, oh, Grandpa. And <laughs> I like Kazuki. He's like, well, I guess that's what he'd technically be. But uh, we don't want around him. She's like, I want to meet him. He's like, nope, not going to let you meet him. Part of me would be like, I really would like Mary to like warm Papa Ray's Papa's heart. But I don't think that would happen. I think he'd try to kill her. And I'm like, no, part of me would like him to like warm the cockles of his heart and call him Grandpa. But then the other part of me would be like, no, stay away from him. If she like warmed his heart, his Grinch heart, and like called him grandpa, and he was like, okay, that'd be really sweet. But this show's gotten really dark, and I don't know if it's going to go there. I just don't know if it'll be that campy. At this point, I'm going to welcome it, but uh, I don't know. Especially with Rio around. But Kazuki's like, I'm not letting him near you with a 10-foot pole. As he's being researched by Q-Chan to give back information. So someone there at the grocery store got a picture of Kazuki and Miri. So here's the problem. He, he asked Ray to come back after taking, while the picture had been taken. He had somebody go spy on Kazuki and Miri as he was asking Ray to come back. Meaning he already knows about Kazuki and Miri, knows that they're the reason that he's been failing at his missions, and is thinking about taking them out. <sighs> no, please. He's like, her dad is a diabolical dude. And she's like, diabolical? Which is a big word for a four-year-old. he's like, it's like scary. And she's like, oh, you mean like when Miss Anna teaches us a song, it's diabolical. And I love that. I love we cut to her, like, on the piano, and she's like, close your hands, open your hands. <laughs> and the sad thing is, I laughed so hard at that because I've substitute taught, like, grade school kids before, elementary kids. And, yeah, they have little songs that they sing for everything to help them learn things because you learn, you learn faster if it's in a song. And... 
I just remember, I can remember trying to do the exact same thing she is and trying to teach these kids a song. I can't carry a tune. So me singing would be like her singing and being like, ooh, and those kids. God, I love the side of those kids where they're just all terrified of her. It's hilarious. And he's like, not quite the same way. I <laughs> like the Kazuki's like, well, that 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 is not the same as your teacher not being able to sing. Uh, Ray's papa is a little bit different. A little bit different. I thought he was going to, like, shoot through the door. I thought it was going to be, like, a test or a trial where Ray, like, opened up the door and the father tried to kill him. And that was, like, their, that's their love language as a family. But, no, his dad doesn't even seem to care that much to even threaten him. It's like, okay. Because he knocks on the door. And they have all the flowers and stuff, like, embroidered on, like, engraved into the door. I'm like, the, his dad is sitting there. His dad's going to need glasses by the time he's 60 because he's sitting there trying to read in the natural light. I'm like, you have a desk lamp, sir, you psycho. Turn it on. Quit doing it for the creepy ambiance. Just ridiculous. And asking Ray to come in. And he says, forgive my long absence, boss. Doesn't call him father, but says they seems well. And he's like, oh, he's living among the little people taught you proper etiquette. I was like, oh, God. I was like, so this is where we're going to start. Great. We're going to start at this level. He's like, Caruso Kazaki, was it? He's a peasant, but I see he's not entirely useless. I was like, oh, dad does not approve. Dad does not approve of the partner. Of course he doesn't. And he says, his skills seem poor. Is he the reason for the mistakes in your recent jobs? And it's like, no, Miri's been the reason, if we're being honest. And he puts the pen down. He's like, the time may have come. And poor Ray. He says, it's a time for you to come home. And Ray being like, I don't want to go home. Like, Ray doesn't want to go back there to that family. Like, it's so cold. There's nothing there for him there. All that's there for him is violence and blood. And Ray's like, that's not, that's not everything to me anymore. Like, I didn't have anything else before. But now I have Kazuki and Miri. And so Miri asks, as we're doing this thing, is Grandpa mad at Ray Papa? And did they get into a fight? And Kazuki's like, it goes deeper than that. <laughs> I like that he doesn't, he doesn't try to, you know, play around like she's dumb, but he just says straightforward. He's like, it's, it's complicated, Miri. It's, it goes a little deeper than that. And he adds to that saying, his family's got special circumstances and she doesn't know what circumstance means. He's like, his dad really expected the world from him. He was super strict teaching him the family business. So around the time that I first met him, I love that. And oh my God, yes, they, they met at, we just talked about the mistletoe. They met under the mistletoe. Oh my God, yes, yes. They met at the mistletoe. Of course they did. Show, you're not subtle. And he was sort of like a robot. I I like that he had the he had the hair grown out into the ponytail, and he had like the the five o'clock shadow and everything, and he looked unkempt, like he wasn't taking care of himself, and he was in the black jacket instead of the blue, like everything was muted and dark and cold. So Ray, before meeting Kazuki, was like a robot. Was like a robot, but then Kazuki has helped him regain his humanity along with Miri. That's what I love is that the show is, has shown that Ray's become more of a human and he's gained his life back. And I don't want that. I don't want him to leave them. I'm, what I'm afraid is going to happen is that the dad is going to threaten him and say, if you don't come back, I'll kill them both. And Ray's like, I don't want you to die, so I'm going to have to leave. And it's going to be that bullshit. And then Kazuki's going to be like, I got to go Rambo and save my man and have Miss Anna and Miss Anna watch Mary. And, but I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? I just, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the writing on the wall that the dad is going to give him an ultimatum being like, you either come take care of the family business or we kill the two of them. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. And Mary's like, a robot? Did he combine? Did he shoot beams? I like that she doesn't know the word circumstances or diabolical. She knows what a combine is. I'm like, I'm like, girl, what would they teach you in class? And Kazuki's like, no. She's like, no beams. 
<laughs> She's adorable. I, I don't blame Kazuki for laughing. Rebelling against his dad was part of the reason that he left home. Uh-huh. And she's like, do you think Papa Ray can make up with his grandpa? It's like, well, that's the problem. Making up means that he leaves. That's the deal. And so then the dad goes into this big, long-winded thing about there are those who make their living in death and they're assassins. And we have this noble blood in the underworld he's like, wherever there's light, darkness inevitably arises. And I'm like, well, but that's the thing. Ray, if he's in the darkness, Kazuki's like his light. And they kind of go hand in hand. I'm like, that's, let your son go. <laughs> Those who shine the brightest require the aid of the deepest darkness. I, I want Ray to use that line against his dad being like, like Kazuki, he shines the brightest. And the deepest darkness aids him. I'm like, I feel like that's, like, I want him to use that line against him. The saying that Kazuki is my brightest light and I'm the deepest darkness helping him. I want him to use that against him so badly. Also, his father commits a cardinal sin of suit fashion. It is my least favorite suit color tie combo. Never ever wear a blue suit, a red shirt, and a black tie. Are you a monster? No, that's like the worst suit combination ever. I hate that. I'm like, keep it classy. Black suit, gray uh, vest, and red tie, like Ray, perfect. But his dad, no, that's an awful suit tie combo. They're the pinnacle of the darkness, the Sua family. It's sovereign, and that blood flows through your veins as well. I feel like he only had Ray to have someone take care of the family. That's the only reason he had Ray was to have someone take over the family. And now he expects Ray to do the same thing. And Ray wants to break that cycle. He doesn't want to be what his dad was. He wants to be his own person and take care of Mary, damn it. And he asks him to carry on the family saying, that's the reason for your existence. That's what I raised you to do. And I'm like, you didn't really raise him to do anything. You were awful. We don't know about the mom. So she's probably not in the picture, right? But Ray has this obligation to the Sua family versus his love for Mary and Kazuki. Yeah, he's like, I have something that I'm living for now too. And it's not my family. It's not my blood family. It's this found family that I love. Uh and he says he's given him all this leash. Now, to the dad's credit, he did give Ray a pretty swankin' bitchin' apartment. To be fair, he did. But I'm like, read the room, dude. Your son does not want to take over your business. He wants him to learn being head of the organization. And Ray doesn't like that at all. No. But he says, the reason I allowed you to live on the outside was because of the oath you took to return one day. And Ray's like, I did say I'd return, but can we make it like 20 years from now? <laughs> I, want him, I want Ray to be like, look, I did say I'd return one day. It's just not this day. <laughs> can we wait till Mary's 18 and can move out? Can we wait till then? Like, I'll come back and take over the family like like later, dad, but but not till my, not till my kid's old enough to leave the nest. Did you find true belonging on the outside? And he says, no, he says, you belong here with us. It's like, did you find true belonging on the outside? But when he says no, I feel like he's either lying or he's like true belonging. Do we consider Kazuki on the outside? Right? Mm. And Ray just is so conflicted. But then he says, you found pointless ties. And that gets Ray's attention because he doesn't want anything to happen to Miri and Kazuki. And Ray's dad says bad influences are common. So yeah, he's going to threaten them. He's like, if one such influence sullied the Sua family blood, I'm like, well, oh my God, I don't, define sullied, define it. And Ray says, no, Kazuki has nothing. I like that he instantly says Kazuki has nothing to do with this. Like, like he's instantly defending his man. He's like, no, Kazuki has nothing to do with this. We, we've slept in the same bed, but I swear there was a kid in between us. It was fine. There was a degree of separation. Ray's like, give me time. And he's like, oh, you need to tie up your affairs. Got it. 
And he says, finish this before the day's over. I thought when he said finish this that he was telling Kaze that he was telling Ray to make up his mind about Kazuki before the day was over. But instead he was giving him a job. Being like, if you can get this job done, I'll give you more time. My fear is, like I said at the beginning of this discussion, my fear is that he's going to give him time, but the time he's giving him is time for the dad to research Kazuki and Miri. And then he's going to realize that they could be something that could drive Ray away from him. And he's going to give Ray an ultimatum, being like, I've given you time to think about it. Now, are you going to take over the family business or not? And if you say no, I'm going to threaten to take out Miri and Kazuki. So you won't have a choice but to come back. I don't want that to happen. And I and I normally wouldn't be scared in a show like this, but damn it, they just showed a lady getting like her head blown off. So I'm like, mm. he's like, I know this man. He says he betrayed the organization. Don't betray my expectations. Mm. And so we see him there showing him downtown walking. And so I like that Kazuki is like, he doesn't want Miri to get on the phone because he's afraid she's going to blab the secret, right? He's going to afraid she's going to blag about the cake and the pizza. And I like that poor Ray when he's just like, like, you know, he wants to be there. He wants to be there with Kazuki. He wants to be there with Miri, but he can't because he has to go because he has to go on this mission. And Kazuki's like, could you say something other than sorry? Like, like they talk like a married couple. He's like, can you say something, honey, other than saying sorry? Come on. And she's just like, I want the phone. And he's like, wait a minute. And he's like, we'll be here. See you. He's like, he won't tell me a single damn thing that matters. Because he doesn't want you to get hurt. Like, that's the thing. Ray doesn't want you to be hurt. Ugh. And she's like, it made the ding. Let's go get the cake. So then we meet Rio. Who at first, Rio has a really creepy look. Like, at first I was like, he has this very stone cut really weird face but then like his eyes are kind of soft so at first I was like maybe Rio won't be so bad he he saw Mary and let her go before maybe he won't be so bad but then he starts talking about why he likes killing people and I was like oh never mind never mind he's bad this is not good mm -mm. he's like you're the heir to the great Sua family I like the instantly judges Ray and Ray's like I'm 20 times hotter than you sir and 20 times more of an assassin so let me in that car. And then, yeah, the dad is watching him leave. Hmm. I wonder if the dad's just like, ah, God. Being like, what is he going to do? What is he planning? So, apparently the guy that is the target taught him how to use weapons. He was like one of his mentors, right? We get a lot of backstory in this episode. I've said in previous reactions that it would be cool to have like an OVA or something about when Ray and Kazuki met. We get that in this episode. And honestly, we get enough content that we don't really need a backstory episode anymore. This kind of cuts it, shapes it up, right? I mean, we could get an OVA of, of them when they were first getting to know each other and like expand upon the flashback that we get. But we don't really need it after this episode, which is kind of interesting. He taught me how to use various weapons and how to do the job. Why did he betray the organization? And Ray, I like that Like when Rio finishes his sentence, when he finishes his sentence about why did he betray, and Ray just kind of like gives him a, a sour look like, yeah, I'm asking. It's not, he's like, quit trying to pick me apart. He's like, I just want to know, right? It's not, I'm not getting too involved. And he says it's a pointless question. Yeah, like Ray wants to know the reason why he's killing this person that trained him. And Rio says it doesn't matter. He betrayed us. So that's, it's a job, right? You should spend your mental energy elsewhere. And he's like, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just think of Kazuki and then not have this problem. But then he sees, then he sees the woman. And the caption says, spotted on a date with a woman believed to be his wife. So he left the organization. He tried to change and leave. He's like, is this the reason? But then he turns the page and Rio's like, he can wait all he likes, but she won't be there. And he shot her. Oh, he's like, and he asked Rio, Ray, why does he kill? Do you do it for the Sua family for fun? And Ray, Ray doesn't answer the question. I, I feel like Ray, Ray just does it out of 
blind obligation. I feel like there's a number of reasons because it's like Ray, Ray has wanted love from his father, right? And so maybe he thought that if he took over the family, if he became an assassin, that's all he knew, one, and two, maybe it would get him that appreciation from his dad. It's not, seemingly, but that he doesn't really know. There's the question of why does he kill? Is that all he knows? And that's the reason? We don't really, he doesn't answer the question for us to know, right? But he asks Rio why he does it, and Rio says for the concept. And Ray's like, I don't understand. He says a car exists to be driven, and money exists to be put into form to desire, which I like the way he's quite poetic with that wording. And then he says, guns exist to inflict violence. So what does he exist for? I thought, I looked through the materials and I wonder these things. What is this person's reason for being? What will he see as his life passes? Then it trans, then it takes a turn. He's like, he's like, I, I think of what's this person's purpose on earth? What are they going to think about as I kill them? Yeah, what's the thing he cares about more than anything? I speculate on the answers. And killing is a way of checking those answers. Oh my God, that is chilling. He's like, I wonder what their purpose in life is and why they exist. Well, as I kill him, I find out those answers. And then I solve the mystery. It's terrifying. And Ray just kind of looks at him like, really, dude? Distasteful. Mm-hmm. And he collects last words. He wants to know what their last words are. I'm glad that Ray didn't tell him so he doesn't get the satisfaction of putting the husband and wife's words next to each other. Hell no. Mm -mm. No way, man. But man, the animation in this scene, the animation, yeah, him saying he collects words. Oh my God. Ray's like, what a weirdo. And so he meets with the guy and he says, I'm here on a job. And he asks, where is she? And when there's no answer, he just immediately looks sad, but he doesn't look surprised. He's like, I see. Like, he already knows what's happened. And at that point, I think he's, like, ready for death. He's just, like, ready to go at it. He's like, maybe if the boss loses you, he'll understand how I feel. Probably not. Like, saying he's probably not going to understand He's like, let's see how you do. And the animation, the animation of this entire fight scene is amazing. It's great. Like the animation is so good. Like the fight choreography, it's top notch. And he tells Ray, he's like, when you left home, I had higher expectations of you because I figured you'd try to break away from what you're, from the cycle that your dad has started. He's like, but you must be a Sawa through, a Sua through and through as he leaves, right? And then, like, God, I love watching the fight choreography. It's so damn good. Like, this show went all out. And then we cut back to Miri saying, Papa Ray looks sad sometimes. And Kazuki's like, no, nah, he's just got one of those faces. He's just got resting bitch face. It's fine. So I like that Miri, Miri connects Ray to her mom, Masaki, saying that they look... They look sad when they shouldn't be. It's like they should be happy, but they look sad. So what's up with that? Like she, I feel like Mary, that, that makes a lot more sense of Mary connecting Ray to her mom and why she's so close to him because she's like, I, she's like, why is he like that? And it's almost like there's a bond there that was already kind of preformed, but then it gets even stronger because it's Ray. And Kazuki's like, oh, well, Kazuki doesn't really have an answer but that look that she has when she's just like this with her head, she looks so much older in that moment. She says sometimes, she's like, men, she's like, men are a mystery, which her mom said. Mom would be drinking and she'd look happy, but also sad, very melancholy. And Papa Ray's the same. He looked all snappy today, but he also looks sad. And then we cut back to their fight between the two of them. And he's like, well, that's why he made all of his favorite foods. So there's like little mini sliders. There's egg salad. There's like carrots cut in the shape of hearts and potatoes and broccoli. There's like cold cuts. There's onion rings and fries, which he likes French fries. There's like wings and pizza. They've got like the hot sauce out. We want to make him feel surprised for his birthday. 
And she's like, but when is he coming back? And Kazuki's like, that's a great question. And then they have a knife fight. I like the knife that one guy has that like gets on his hand, gets on his finger there. That one's really cool. But then they do the knife fight against one another. And he says, acting as a mindless killing tool and following the organization blindly, not hesitating to turn your blade on anyone. You're the perfect assassin. So the idea of being an assassin is just being a tool. And that kind of relates to, to Ray because he didn't have a goal in life or a purpose. He was just like, well, if I don't have a purpose or a goal, I guess I'll do this because I'm good at it. What other choice do I have? And the way his dad talks, it seems like he didn't have any chance in the outside world of having a normal life. So this was the only, this was the only option. But the guy talks as he's fighting him. And Ray says, well, that's just the law of the organization. He's like, you know, you can't ever leave it. And that goes back to when Q-Chan told him, he's like, you know how this world is. We have to follow the rules. You can't just leave. You know what happens if you try to leave. Case in point. And that guy says, of course, a puppet wouldn't understand. I found something worth protecting. So I changed how I live. So it's the idea of finding something worth protecting. And I feel like they say something instead of someone because that attaches too much emotion to it. And they, they're, they're our assassins, right? So they're used to not having emotions when it comes to things like this. So when he says something he means that woman that he was married to and he changed because he wanted to be with her and he says but you people stole the thing i care about more than anything and then that's when he like slices and that's he sliced ray's hand that's why it was bleeding earlier and then ray pulls out the gun but he doesn't fire it at him I like that. And that speaks volumes for Ray's character that he pulls the gun out, but he doesn't fire it immediately. Right. That pulls that, that says so much for his character. Cause he puts it away and says, I have something worth protecting too. Oh, it's his family. It's his damn family. Oh, and the guy's like, well, you'll never change either. He, and so he tells, Ray that he's not going to change. I guess in that moment, he's like, you'll never change. He's like, you keep like changing my expectations. So the idea is, can Ray change? I mean, and change is a strong word because Kazuki was afraid of change. And it's not necessarily changing who you fundamentally are, but it's changing your priorities, what you care about, what your goals are. I mean, Ray and Kazuki both in this series start out from one as from one aspect of the spectrum and they start to go on this journey and these are the kind of stories I like I like stories where the characters go on a journey and of reflection and development and character growth and we're seeing that with both of them it's really really refreshing right but yeah and then he headbutts the guy and the guy he not he shot him in the leg right and then he hit him up against the railing and the railing snapped and he fell off and Ray went to grab him. He went to grab him to stop him from falling, like almost out of instinct, right? And that's when the guy, he looks up at him and smiles as Ray's just stunned and says, I'm on my way. And he did hear him. He just didn't tell the guy. So... The two things I thought of when he said, I'm on my way, is one, I'm on my way to see her. Like, I've changed. I'm on my way to see my, the woman that I love. The other thing I thought of is the Proclaimer song where he's like, I'm on my way from misery to happiness today. Like, there's that. So, and that could be it too. He's on his way from leaving this life of misery to being with her. But Ray was going to try to save him. That's, I mean, I think that speaks volumes for his character in general. And Rio was like, did he have any last words? And Ray's like, I couldn't hear them. I like that Rio's like, well, you're worthless. This show got dark, though. They show him, like, splattered on the ground. They show them putting, putting him in the, the bed of the trunk of the car. Like, 
And then he says, I honestly didn't care who it was that was going to have to die, whether it was you or him. He's like, I didn't have a preference. And Ray says he's going to stay there. And Rio's like, fine, I would have taken one or the other, though. But Ray is left with his thoughts, and his father's saying, you better not betray my expectations. And he's like, am I the same way as my dad? Am I heartless like him? And the answer is no, it's not. You're not, Ray. And that's when he hears his phone going off and Kazuki calling. He's like, I need some time to cool off. And he says, you'll never change either. And so I love this monologue that we get. I love this monologue we get about Ray, right? And Ray said that for the longest time, he tried not to think. So he was just trying to exist. He didn't have a purpose. He didn't want to think about what he was doing. He just wanted to exist. And he's like, I tried not to think. And we see him like, I just did what I was ordered. And he's like, and I just killed people. And he just says it over and over again. And then what we get is him, the last shot of him killing is when he killed Mary's dad. He's like, I wasn't thinking. He's like, I killed her dad without a second thought. Which, granted, it doesn't seem like he was a nice person, but that's what we get there in that moment. And I think it's, it is fitting because in the first episode, I got Kazuki and Miri's dad confused because they look similar. I don't think it's coincidence that we only see the back of his head. So you could confuse it for Kazuki if you weren't paying attention, right? And then we see Kazuki, like, on the ground holding Miri as he shoots the dad in the head. And he says that I, and doesn't finish the sentence. And then Kazuki shows up to get him. He's like, he's like, am I really capable of changing? And then Kazuki's like, what are you doing, you dumbass? Ray, Kazuki came to get him. Kazuki came to save Ray. So damn sweet. I love this monologue where they get in the car. And he comes to get him and he's like, he's like, there's no time. Get in. He's like, I left Mary all by herself. He's like, I left her by herself. He's like, I don't want to hear it from you. I don't want your excuses. We got to go back home before she wakes up. He's like, I left her at home. I like that they, again, they're like, you left her there? No worries. It's like, just like a couple. We're short on time, so I'm gunning it. I love it. I love that he just flies through traffic. Luckily, there's not a lot of traffic there. And he's like, how did you know where I was? And he's like, did you forget who set up your phone? I love that he's like, you're overprotective. Yeah, so Ray had his phone set up. He set up Ray's phone. And yes, as we have established with Kazuki back in episode six, Kazuki is very overprotective, especially of the people that he cares about. But he has reason to be. His, his past experience with his wife, with his would-be wife, has shown him that. He's like, Mary would be upset if you didn't come home. You forced my hand, asshole. I love it. He's like, Mary asked all about you. It took me back to the old times. He was thinking of how much Ray has changed. He's like, old times. He's like, when Q-Chan first introduced us, you were such a mess. Your room was full of garbage and all your food was instant crap. Unshaven, ungroomed, living like a shut-in with zombie dead eyes. And he's like, well, you're still shut-in, so you haven't changed too much. I love that. He says, like, you were any better acting like you caused all the world's misfortunes. So, yeah. So, Kazuki says that Ray, they both established that both Ray and Kazuki, they changed by being with each other. So they've already been changing, whether they realize it or not. It's like Kazuki thought that everything was his fault when he first joined up with Ray, and Ray was a shut-in. But also Ray saying that Kazuki was like that shows that Ray's been observing. Ray's been paying attention this whole time. Kazuki may just not have been noticing it, right? I love that. He's like, you were a useless load at work early on, too. And I like that Kazuki's like, hey! You never said anything before now. I love that they're having this moment of confession with one another. They're opening up and sharing with one another. It's so beautiful. I absolutely love it. He's like, you're right. I didn't. 
I didn't think saying it would change anything. And he's like, you didn't matter much to me back then. But then you started cleaning. I love that transition. He's like, you didn't mean anything to me, so I didn't feel like it was worth talking about. But then you cared. But then you started caring about me. And I, I love the sequence here. Again, we don't need the OVA. We show him like cleaning up all of the energy drinks, all the cola, all the cigarettes. Like, and his whole apartment is just a disaster. Like, there's nothing on the kitchen countertops. There's nothing on the walls. There's no decorations. It's just trash. And he says, Kazuki says, I couldn't stand watching you live like that. And so he dusts everything and sweeps. And then he gets the furniture and everything. As, as Ray just stands there, Kazuki decorates everything for him. And he, like, dunks him in the bathtub. Like, like strips him of his clothes, dunks him in the bathtub. And we see Ray pop up like a little cat. And he's like, and he cuts his hair. So Kazuki is responsible for Ray's haircut. I love it. Of course he is. And Ray says, I wanted to tell you to back off. And he's like, I bet you did. And he gets him like the healthy food and the gym equipment and all this. Like, like Kazuki has cared for Ray so much. And we just, as the audience, have been like, we kind of suspected it. But seeing it like this is, it's so sweet. And he says, but it wasn't so bad. I'm like, ah! Oh! And Kazuki's like, yeah, I bet. I'm like, this is such love language. I cannot get over it, y'all. Mm -mm. And he says, Kazuki, do you think that we can change? And Kazuki just laughs at that because he's like, I don't know. He's like, I've been wondering the same thing since last episode. And then they go home and he sees all the decorations, the birthday party things, Miri with the hat on. There's red wine and apple juice. There's sparkling apple, ju apple juice and red wine for them. Shut up. Shut up. And they both have little birthday hats. One's light blue and one's dark blue. The light and the dark. I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, my God. And happy birthday. And he's like, it was today. And he pulls the cake out. And then Mary getting up and he's like, Mary helped with everything all day long. I love he takes the lighter. She wanted to make you happy. That, that just got me when Ray's like so surprised. Like this is his home and these are people that care about him and love him. And he just looks over and Mary, I'm sorry. If y'all hate Mary, that birthday song is the cutest damn thing I've ever heard. How can you hate her after that? Where she's like, oh, happy birthday to you. It's so cute. That little thing where she like points at him. It's so sweet and then collapses. Oh, and he genuinely smiles. He genuinely smiles, damn it. Like he has a genuine little smile on his face. And I can't, cannot, it's over. I just, oh my God, that smile. Get a photo of it. And then I love the cousin. He's like, you did it, Mary. He smiled. That was like the goal was to get him to smile. And he's like, go on. And he blows out the candles. Oh my God. And of course, that's when Rio shows up with Q at Q-Chan. Q-Chan, every time he says, sorry, we're closed, some assassin shows up. And he, at this point, he should just be like, are you an assassin? I like that he gets kind of mad that Rio shows up. He's like, like, after hours. And he says, an info request from the boss. He says, the organization trusts you. So you can't say no. And Q doesn't show any response, but he makes like a little, mm, saying, and it's, Kazuki and Miri. Uh, I don't want any of that. No. So, I love this episode so much because, yeah, like we talked about at the beginning of the reaction, even if you don't think that Rei and Kazuki are going to romantically or sexually be attracted to one another, they love each other. And Rei loves Kazuki and Miri and wants to be a family with them. And they make him happy and damn it, that boss trying to take it away from them. I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. I, mm, mm, mm. Nope, I, I don't want to see that happen. So maybe, 
Maybe Q-Chan will help them get, like, witness protection and get, like, an escape. Maybe he'll help them escape. I just need that to happen. He needs to help them escape there ASAP. Because I want Ray and Kazuki and Miri to be happy. And I'm like, show, you're going to make me feel angsty about this, aren't you? I feel like episodes seven and eight, these two episodes, they were like, oh, we're not really going to pour on the angst yet. And I'm like, but no. So for the rule of eight, this episode was top tier. I Six, seven, and eight have just been like bam after bam after bam of quality. And I'm here for it. So... I'm so excited for next week, but I'm also dreading it so much. So what do we do? In any case, um, I'm excited to know your thoughts down below. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this episode and this reaction and discussion. But um, I, one more thing before we go. I want to give a special shout out to our philanthropy tier over on Patreon. Um, if you'd like to talk about buddy daddies and share fan art and talk about theories for the next episode or about the old episodes in general, um, it's a dollar on the Discord on my Patreon page. If you want to go ahead and see next week's episode, it's $5 on there for the month. And then a special shout out to the people donating $10 to help me keep doing what I love to do and pay for anime, manga, and streaming services as well. So a special thanks to Edgar, to Dana, to Larry Manning, to Anime Annie, to Truck, to Tyrone Tyrone, and to Kenny. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate y'all and I hope y'all have a wonderful day. All of my love. So in the meantime, I hope the rest of y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah! I'll be back uh, next week with episode nine of Buddy Daddies. See y'all then.